Okay, Steve, here we are, 2015 at Clark Auction. This is the first sale of the new year, and it's a nice, soft, snowy day outside. We have a melange of items here this year. We've lots of sculpture, lots of mid-century, lots of furniture, and we're highlighting items from the Godfather at Three Estate from Oyster Bay. And we we'll start with this piece here. This is leather top bureau plat, 19th century. Beautiful with the parquetry inlay, but very solid, strong bronze work on it. Look at the paw feet on it. Tina's slightly dull, but a wonderful uh, lines to this desk. Could possibly be Linky, or certainly one of the better French makers. We're not sure who. We let the, the experts decide on that. But this was from the lobby of that estate. All over the place, we've got furniture, mid-century paintings, all the other appraisers will get to it eventually in more detail. But before I go into the main room, just look at the size of this. This is a patinated bronze by an artist, a Russian artist who actually does a lot of work in Israel still living and his name is Leon Bronstein. Look at the size of that compared to me. I think this is very conservatively estimated at three to five thousand. Okay, moving into the main room, Steve. Keen has gone climbing Kiliman Kilimanjaro. He left today, so we're gonna try and do a bit of the mid-century for him as we pass. So I start off with this pair of, I believe, Adrian Pearsall upholstered chairs. Nice upholstery, sort of chinoiserie vintage upholstery. There's my phone ringing away in my pocket, but we won't worry about that. Before we move into the room, he's, these are two of the, some of the statuary and garden items that came out of the Godfather estate. There's a pair of, oh, these are marble urns. We're selling them individually. Just look at the size. It took six of us to lift these in the garden. Nice with garlands of fruit and stuff around them. These are estimated individually, I believe at a thousand to 15 each. Moving right along here, Steve. I hit on some of the mid-century received. We have this beautiful marble top extending table here. We have this Herman Miller exotic wood knee hole desk. Nice with the chrome edges. Over here from the Oyster Bay estate, I'm gonna focus on it, even though brown wood is a bit soft. This is a particularly nice Carlton desk with the leather top. You can see the age on it. It's been restored, so it looks a lot better on the outside, but you can see from here, it's probably early 19th century. We'd like it to be earlier, but just a beautiful, beautiful desk in beautiful condition. You can always say that the, the Don wrote his checks on that one, if he ever wrote a check. Moving right along, you can see there's lots of, lots and lots of mid-century furniture. I'm gonna focus a bit on this over here, because we've got a, quite a bit of highly carved oak, which is still finding a good market. This is from a local, Larchmont Estate, beautiful condition. It's carved oak, probably by a company called Horner. Nice curved glass on the sides, but really beautiful condition, nice big size. Here we have the first of the four marble statues here, also from the Godfather Estate. Plenty of details on our website if you want to go into a look at that. Here we have one of a pair of mirrors. This is actually what the, these are an 18th century pair of mirrors, but this one is 19th century, it's gesso on wood as opposed to the other one which is 18th century. But it's nice to have a matched pair. This is also from the estate. Down here we have two, a lot of two urns. We do have four of these urns. Here's another statue. This is one that's featured actually in our blog that Keen did. It shows uh, Al Pacino walking along discussing stuff in the film. And this is one of the garden statue you will see actually in that episode. We have it with the pedestal. Personally lugged it on my shoulders with a few of the boys to get it out. It was a, the pair on one side and then the other two on the other side. And here, before we get to the other statues, look at this magnificent sideboard. I mean, the amount of work that went into this. Just look at the back. You have the camel, the palm trees, carved all over is the expression on this one mountain men, everything. This is probably Horner as well, from the local Larchmont estate. Very conservatively estimated, I believe at eight to 1200, should blow through that, we hope. Even though brown wood is a little bit soft, that's sort of exceptional. And here's Steve, the second of, that, of these two statues. They are being sold individually, they're on pedestals. They were originally on the uh, arbor as they were the, in the garden and they were attached to the wall by a thing at the back. You can see them nicely weathered. This is the second of the mirrors. This is actually the 18th century one in pretty good shape, just missing some of its gilding, but you know, it's a bit slightly weathered, I would say. These were down in the basements, sort of lying in storage. 
Here's the last of the four statues. You get an idea of the size of me here. It's like the as is around here. Okay. With that, I'll get on quickly because we got Bruce and Neely and Whitney and everything to go through. Here we have for your used furniture clients, nice Beacon Hill dining room set, a set of six shield back Prince of Wales shield back chairs and a nice banded and inlaid pedestal based table. In its day, it would have been highly, highly desirable, but now it's a bit not as, as it used to be. The back room is as usual, as loaded, not as loaded as lots of the times, but pretty loaded. There's lots of sculpture in the sale. Neely will try and deal with a lot of that. Look at lots of mid-century. Bruce is gonna cover a bit of that for Keane. As we move along here, I'm actually looking for one thing that I remember that I wanted to talk about, which was a Serapi carpet, and I'm not seeing it. Well, it's over here. Before we get on, Steve, we'll just focus on the items here. That's my son's new Christmas present over here. But before I hand you over to Bruce, I just wanna show you this Serapi carpet. Very rare, very, very old. Serapi carpets in as is, missing borders, very rough in the shape, but very rare to find as magnificent a carpet as this. And I do believe that they will, the ruggers will bring this back to life and it'll be uh, quite a rare find. This also came from a Long Island estate. We got a lot from Long Island this year. Anyway, with that, I wish everyone a happy new year. I hope to see you here on Sunday, the 11th at 12 p.m. If you're not here, of course, we're on liveauctioneers.com and bidsquare.com. And with that, I'm gonna hand you over to Bruce. Thank you. Thanks, Ron, and happy new year to everyone. I'm gonna hit on quite a few things today. Keen's just left for a trip, the two week trip to Africa. So starting here out of a large my attic, a pair of labeled Har Harvey Prober lounge chairs. In just yesterday is a really great large pair of antique bronze urns, Asian urns, maybe, maybe Chinese, probably Japanese, but it's all Chinese symbolism and Taoist figures and peaches and really, really beautiful and large size. Here's a good pair of, probably continental, but a good pair of carved hall chairs, walnut, 19th century. We have a lot of wonderful carved furniture. For me, one of the highlights of this sale is probably the best Victorian center table that, that we've sold here while I've worked here. I, I imagine it to be Herder, it could be Kimball and Cabus, it could be several makers, but a very important 19th century. We did so well with the Alexander Rue cabinet that we feel pretty good about the best of Victorian, and this table should fall under the best of Victorian furniture. And from the same estate, a Pietra Dura table that's really to die for. The quality of the inlay is superb. Malachite and coral and lapis. It's really just a beautiful turn of the century, 1890s table, French style. And always desirable, a pair of, I don't think they are Milo Bauman, but a good pair of flat bar chrome chairs, mid-century, I think in pretty good condition. Rose medallion or rose fami, including a nice little covered casserole in very good condition. And then the rest of this is, is all one lot, a nice tray. And up here, a pair of heron cash pose or I suppose wine coolers, they're probably wine coolers. Nice 19th century, big 19th century French bronze signed. Here an antique Asian bronze bell. I actually think the bell might be Chinese even though everything else seems to be Japanese. Some miscellaneous items, or random anyway. A beautiful set of artist signed Ainsley dinner plates, big dinner plates in mint condition. And this came in last walk-in Wednesday. It's probably teplets with two patinas and cherubs and little winged figures here and another cherub up front and a pretty good size. And here I have a group of San Idolfonso pottery all out of a house less than a mile from here being sold in one generous lot. These are by Tafoya, Margaret Tafoya, both signed. And this is by somebody else, but it's part of the lot. And you can see the details on our website, all in good condition. And from the same house, a little Heim Gross uh, bronze called Man vs. Beast, signed and numbered. 
and from the same house as before with the Pietro Dura table and the specimen marble is another specimen marble game board with lead chess pieces in this box with signed and dated Rome 1876 I don't know if you'll get that but quite a rare thing and, he, and here a nice little uh, five section gilded and lacquered Japanese in row artist signed you can see all the detail photos on our website and right here Steve behind you and in front of Ogie's big new Christmas Jeep is a very large uh, sculpture iron s welded steel sculpture by uh, Leckberg I think it's Barbara Leckberg and this is one of a group of I think four I think there's no doubt that they're Saren and I th there's no no labels but there's there's a pair of these all being sold in one lot there's a pair of this size and then two miscellaneous smaller ones and another pair and these are very good quality and heavy really heavy a nice pair of flat chrome mid-century lounge chairs and a good lot of three guns uh, I forget the names at the moment one's a Winchester this little this little smallest one is a Winchester and Barker is the name on another one anyway they're all being sold in one lot it's a very generous antique rifle or shotgun lot and here an item that's going to be hard to see on camera but a very early I said 18th century or earlier it's some sort of a lead fragment but it, it really could be 17th or 16th century we'll just call it antique maybe it was part of a cistern I'm not sure and over here a pair of George Nelson steel case chests in good original condition and this is an early mid-century sofa forgive me if I'm wrong I think it's Eames it's 1950s Keen knows who it is but it's kind of a rare sofa a nice pair of revolving ottomans or lounge chairs always desirable in today's market Ron mentioned the table and chairs these are beautiful black lacquered chairs with little brass accents and nickel plated sabots I don't know who the maker is but they're mid-century and they're beautiful chairs we have a terrific collection of carpets Ron showed you that one early Serapi but here's this one's not so antique but it's a beautiful carpet we've had a bit of interest in this one we we have a lot of interest in carpets recently which is a good sign for us speaking of carpets here's a a, a big room size Saruk we always have them this is in really good condition here we've had a lot of interest in this I think it's Edward Wormley for Dunbar the double chaise lounge or tete-a-tete of course it needs to be reupholstered but they're hard to come by and just on Friday we got a lot of Keen got a lot of mid-century stuff out of a house in White Plains I'm not exactly sure who all the designers are but it's scattered throughout the gallery including a, a very good selection of lighting there's smoke glass there's some Danish lighting I'll show you as we go around oh this is Fritz Hansen Arnie Jacobson for Fritz Hansen chair and ottoman we just found this morning that it's Mark Denmark underneath there's no doubt about its authenticity this is a beautiful at least 19th century but I think it might be much older Chinese day bed or opium bed and here a nice clean bronze inlay brass inlay and bronze mounted mahogany vitrine original finish I think it's not signed but I think there's no doubt that it's by Henry Dasson uh, I found a bedroom set with the same armoire uh, that was signed so I, I think there's no doubt anyway we'll just call it 19th century French top quality and th this is one of a pair of bronze 19th century French bronzes the other one is on the other side of the room uh, peasants in the field Ron showed you the Carlton desk but on top of it is this Grand Tour bronze lamp oil lamp uh, 19th century Italian and you've seen the base a million times but 
Uh, I'd be hard pressed for anyone that's ever had this top with this little sort of dwarf figure and dolphins and lions and masks here, all complete. Best one I've ever seen and I have an interest in all these Grand Tour things. A set of three mid-century carpet, signed carpet, lounge chairs. Here, really again, the most wonderful piece of carved oak furniture, probably German or at least made by a German immigrant, maybe in New York. It has German mottos or, or inscriptions along the crossbar, but the details on both sides and the top are really phenomenal. So this is about as nice an oak table, Gothic revival, as you're gonna find. And the last piece, well, there's another one there. If you pan that one, that one's much later, but a, a little kind of Pietra Dura tabletop came in yesterday. Here for me is a wonderful specimen marble top, uh, antique specimen marble top, just the top, and then labeled by the maker in Florence, I believe, but you can see the details on our website. An antique or vintage, I think it's older and it's been refinished but a heavily carved Chinese, uh, definitely teak or rosewood, Chinese cabinet that's unbelievably carved. Another piece of mid-century furniture that Keen quite liked. It's kind of like George Nelson, but it's got another label on it. This came from upstairs in our Larchmont house. And from the same house in Larchmont is this Tiffany & Company mahogany hall clock. We have the key, the weights, the pendulum, theoretically with a moon phase dial, beautiful gilt dial, uh, engraved and gilded dial. Uh, I didn't even notice the star in the back of the dial there. Anyway, made in England for Tiffany, I think exclusively for Tif Tiffany. And here's some of the chrome lighting that I was telling you Keen got in White Plains. This one is particularly nice. I don't know, maybe it's Robert Sonneman, maybe it's better than that. I'm sure Keen put it up and give it, gave it a description. And out of Larchmont, we have two lots, I think a total of maybe 12 of these Bertoia chairs uh, being sold in two lots. Some have different colored vases. But anyway, there's about 12 of them. They all came from the same basement in Larchmont. A good antique Sheridan Mahogany sideboard from our walk-in wednesday last uh these these i'll do they they fall under decorative our uh, our walk-in wednesday is a set of four copies 19th century florentine copies of old master paintings but really beautifully done one frame with losses but it's a nice group a nice decorative group and steve i did want to show you well i should show you this pair of leather chairs Certainly French, 40s, always desirable. These should do very, very well. And from Larchmont, usually we're not too excited about antique English oak furniture, but this is just the most beautiful triple door linen press, I guess, uh, over, over, over drawers with in mahogany cornice and ebony inlays. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful piece of George III furniture. A set of, out of Larchmont, a set of Danish chairs and this big table that was in the kitchen, original to the house, I think, or at least they've been in there since the 50s or 60s. And also from the same house, two Richard Schultz outdoor tables with blue enamel tops. That's from Larchmont. Before I turn it over to Neelia, this is one of two rugs in the sale that's being sold as one lot. Both kind of Afghan rugs. This one's terrific, like a, almost like a sumac. I think it probably is an Afghan sumac. But the one that they really like, and I wasn't so familiar with, is this one that's, I guess, an Ersari. Afghani or sorry, these came in on a walk-in Wednesday, estate fresh, first time to market. And there's been a lot of action on, on these carpets, so I hope they do well. And with that, I'll turn it over to Nelia, and we hope to see you on January 11th at 12 o'clock noon. Thank you.
Thank you, Bruce. This is a great sale for paintings, drawings, and sculpture. As you may have recalled, we spoke in the past about an Alexander Calder gouache that we have coming up, and this will be included in our sale on the 11th. It's an untitled gouache and ink on paper, but of course it depicts the sun and moon. It was done in 1975, so towards the end of Calder's career. This has been registered with the Calder Foundation in New York just last month, and it was originally from the Knoedler Gallery, and we have an accompanying certificate from Lawrence Rubin from 1978. It then was transferred to uh, Irving Galleries in Palm Beach, where it was purchased by our Harrison New York consigner. It's being offered with an estimate of 40 to 60,000. We hope it does well. We have a lot of hopes. Calder market has been pretty hot right now. Of course, Calder's known for his invention of the mobile, and I hope you'll check our website. We actually have several kinetic sculptures in this sale that are probably Calder inspired pieces. Here we have an early American work from 1939. This is by Walter Quirt who in the 30s was a social realist painter and artist, uh, but moved on to surrealism. So here we have a, a surrealist landscape with figures, wonderfully done, done in ink and colored pencil. I think it's a really nice work, a little bit of condition issues along the edges and margins, um, but with, when a frame is placed around it and a proper mat, I think this will look wonderful. This came in on a walk-in Wednesday and is estimated at 1,500 to 2,500. Now I'm going to show you a work that came out of an important Westport, Connecticut estate. This is by Orville Bowman, and you can see a nice, bright, whimsical painting. Bowman worked in Palm Beach, Florida, but also was active in Haiti, traveled there in the 1950s, and was very much inspired by the Caribbean lifestyle. He was adopted by the people. They appreciated his art, and a lot of it reflects their culture. Many people mistake him for African American or Caribbean, but in fact, a white American. Uh, this work was done in 1970. It's called La Brock Pimpon, and you can see we have a ha possibly Haitian family aboard a color colorful ship with animals, fruits, wonderful piece uh, estimated at 10 to 15,000. We have another work from this estate which I'll show you in just a moment. To my right is an oil on canvas by Kim Foon, a Korean artist born in the 1920s. This is entitled Histologic, and a wonderful abstract painting with muted colors, I think a really attractive balanced composition. There's just something very appealing about the softness and organic shapes in this composition. This actually does have a MoMA lending label on the back of the work. This is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500, but one of my favorite abstracts in the sale. Another piece I'm going to show you is just over here, and it's by Robert Goodnow. A nice large painting, you can see the scale of it here. And this is called Uplift, Uplift One. This was executed in 1989. This came from the same Westport estate as the Bowman that I just showed you. So here we have these very loose brush strokes with overlapping and more precise geometric shapes. So a lot of texture in this composition. We sort of have an outburst starting from the center. Really attractive painting, lots of color. This is estimated at six to 9,000, which I think is pretty conservative for such a large work. Here we have a wonderful oil on canvas from 1909. This is by a French post-impressionist painter, Carlos Raymond. And you can see the wonderful use of light and color as the light comes sprinkling through the trees down here and reflected again in the shore and the background. This work is modestly estimated at, I believe, two to three thousand dollars. I hope it will do much better than that, however. Um, we have another boat scene by the artist estimated at 800 to 1200, so you look on the website for that piece. Another work that just came in is this polished bronze sculpture. This is by David Hostetler. And Hostetler almost exclusively creates female forms, um, often with this very angular composition here, as we see, um, and then contrasted with rounding forms in the head. This is estimated 1,000 to 1,500. I actually just saw another piece by the artist, a wood sculpture, last week. I hope the consigner's watching, and we'll bring that into us uh, in the next month. But a nice piece, and we're happy to have it. This is a work by Judith Rothschild. It's an oil on canvas laid on a board and it's called Pale Dunes. We have a title inscribed on the back. And Rothschild uh, worked in New York. She also worked in California and in Provincetown. So I believe this is probably a work from the late 1940s when she was in Provincetown or maybe early 50s in California. Uh, you can see she uses wonderful planes of color and bold line to create an interesting composition. This work comes from an estate in Larchmont of an artist who knew Rothschild and many other artists of the 50s and 60s. We have two works by Egel Tumarkin in the sale. The first is a mixed media on canvas, 
uh, a resin and collage up here abstract in the bold red and black colors. Uh, signed in the lower right corner, this is estimated at two to three thousand dollars. We also have a very large brushed steel outdoor garden sculpture, which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, to the left of that is a nice abstract work from the 1970s. And this is by Morris Shulman. Shulman was an American artist. He worked through most of the 20th century. This is one of 11 pieces in the sale by him. I will show you one other work from the early 1950s, which is very different in subject and style. This is estimated at uh, six, 600 to 900. I've shown you a large number of 20th century paintings, but we do have some earlier works in the sale. This here is by Charles Spence Lay. And this is a lady in red climbing a tree. And it's a beautiful scene. The, the British painter worked through the 19th and into the 20th century, so it's probably a turn of the century painting. I love the way her dress is reflected in the flowers and the fields in the background. It's expertly painted. This is estimated at, I think, a modest $3,000 to $5,000. Thomas McKnight is probably one of the most recognizable contemporary American artists. Um, right here we have an interior scene by McKnight. It is an oil on canvas. His prints and G clays are readily available everywhere. Um, but this is an unusual scene. I, I, what I really like about it is the modern sculpture that you see on the edges of the composition, looking out onto perhaps a, a European landscape, maybe a French cityscape. Uh, this came from a Connecticut home and is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Another 19th century work came in on our walk-in Wednesday consignment day. This piece by Ludovico Marchetti, an Italian artist from the 19th century, uh, is a procession scene, an oil on panel from 1888. Very happy to have this painting. It, there's wonderful and fine details, even though it's a small work. This is estimated at 1,500 to 2,500. Also from the Italian school, we have a set of three watercolors. These are actually watercolors. They're not Piranesi prints. Uh, they're wonderful architectural drawings showing the ruins with figures so you can see the scale of the architecture. They're all housed in their beautiful and original Eglomies frames. This beautiful set is estimated at $3,000 to $5,000. I showed you one large painting by Morris Shulman uh, from the 1970s, a big abstract. These are two pieces from his uh, earlier works. This is from 1950, or they're about the mid-1950s, when he was working in Monhegan Island in, in Maine. Uh, so you can see done sort of in an abstract manner, but still realist subjects and almost cubist, cubist forms. Uh, both interior still lives, a very different color palette, mostly greens and muted reds. These are estimated with $400 to $600 estimates. These are all from the estate of the artist, so we hope that they do well. We have several pieces of sculpture in the sale. Bruce touched on some, so did Ron. This is a work by Peter Cheney from 1961. It's called Cliffside One, um, and this was included in his first solo exhibition in, uh, in New York. And you can find that information on his website. He is still living and there are still pieces available for sale. Uh, but this is modestly estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. This came from the same Westport, Connecticut estate as the Tumarkin pieces, the uh, Carlos Raymond, and the McKnight. We looked at the mixed media work by Egal Tumarkin. Now here is the brushed steel sculpture by the same Israeli artist. So you can see a very, very large work. This is a much larger scale than most of the pieces that have come to auction in this style. It's signed right over here, but you'll have to take a look on the website to see that. This was pulled from a garden. It was kept outdoors, so a little bit dirty, but can easily be cleaned. Uh, there are no other condition with it, issues with it at all. This is estimated at only 6,000 to 9,000. Much smaller pieces have done within that price range. So I do have high expectations for this work. Another fun and whimsical piece is this work by Hilda Steckel, and she's known for these acro acrobatic figures done in a ceramic or terracotta finished with a glaze. And you can see this is almost life-size. I'm standing behind it on a sofa. Wonderful piece, wonderful characteristics in the faces, very good condition. This was actually kept outdoors, but is still in almost perfect condition. And this work is estimated at $800 to $1,200. From a collector in Greenwich, Connecticut, comes this work by Bryant Hunt. This is a bronze and it's called Square Lake. It's from an edition of three, I believe this is three of three, done in 1975. 
And Hunt does these exact replicas of bodies of water. He's done waterfalls, he's done other lakes, other identifiable lakes. Um, and this is from the same collection as the Ibram Lasso sculpture that you may recall we had back in April that brought nearly $100,000. This work, though, is only estimated at $3,000 to $5,000. So just a small sampling of the nearly 100 or more pieces of sculpture and painting that we have this sale. So please take a look at our website. And here is Whitney to take it over with the jewelry and sterling. Thank you. Thank you, Nelia, and Happy New Year. Starting our selection of jewelry and sterling for our January 11th auction is this 14 karat gold necklace. It, does, it is depicted by ram's heads and 23 garnets, a beautiful piece from a local larch monastery. And also in this auction we do have this beautiful Victorian 14 karat yellow gold and old European cut diamond brooch. It is accompanied by an appraisal that has all the information on the color cut and carat weight on this piece. And from a local Mamaronic estate we do have this Fabre Lou Bathy 50 diving depth meter Swiss men's diving watch. We do have a lot of interest in this piece and it is being sold as is but does work for a short period of time and there is a, a small bit of rust on the screw back here but there is a lot of interest and it is a wonderful diving watch. Also from a local large monastery, we do have this selection of gold jewelry, a 14 karat gold pendant and chain. We have this 14 karat white gold ladies watch and this 18 karat yellow gold bird brooch, all one lot here. And one of our multi-piece sterling jewelry groupings is this large lot here. A very sweet little dog brooch. We have earrings, a little coin purse brooches. This is a, a lovely little 18, 800 silver brooch with a painted portrait. And moving on to a selection of our jewelry, we have this Lunt flatware service for eight. This is a George Jensen cocktail shaker. Unfortunately, it is missing the top, but it is a great Jensen piece. And here from one of our walk-in days is this very large cut crystal and sterling pitcher with a nice floral design around the border. And moving over here, we do have this large service for 12, a Gorham La Scala flatware set. Really a beautiful weighty set here. Nice design to the handles. And for another piece from one of, another collection from one of our Walk in Wednesday days are these collection of medallions or plaques by Boris Schatz, who was one of the, who was one of the founders of the Bizalel School. Two lots here, lots 276 and 277, really two very nice groups here. And last but not least, I will be talking about two pieces of Picasso Medora in this auction. So we do have this Picasso Medora plate. It is dated on the front 10353 and on the back there are there's additional stamps and information here. And last but not least we do have this Picasso jug. It is titled Black Engraved Face and dated 1953 and it is number 71 out of an edition of 100 with an estimate of three to five thousand. And that wraps it up for my selection here and we hope to see you on January 11th. Thank you.